Uh, just, just with a, uh, okay. Hello. So this is the second part of chapter uh, 12. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, so we can um, see uh, what, uh, so what we did so far uh, last, uh, last week that I had some computer issues. Uh, and so we go back to that for a minute. There we go. Uh, and then we go forward. So basically, this is the advanced forecasting method chapter. Uh, we have briefly uh, mentioned that uh, this chapter deals with uh, complex seasonalities. And so we have seen. Uh, what are the cases for uh, making advanced forecasting methods uh, and um, with seasonalities which are not exactly um, uh, usual uh, as usual. Uh, we have briefly seen uh, the profit model uh, and now uh, we are going to have a look at the vector autoregression, so the VAR type of model, the neural network uh, model, and the bootstrapping and vetting. So let's uh, um, um, have a look. Uh, so this is was the first. Um, I have. Um, Restyle it a bit the, the notes and uh, push them uh, on GitHub so you find everything uh, in there. So this is basically the profit model uh, that we have we seen. And uh, um, so basically uh, at the bottom of the chapter, uh, they mentioned something which is related with the um next se section okay and um so when uh, to use vector autoregressions uh compared to um uh, the, the things that we saw uh before uh because uh, basically what we did it is uh, that we dealt with um, uh, um, basically changing. Um, so we had uh, unidirectional uh, type of models. So we had the response variable and then the changing uh, uh, variables are were just the predictor. So we basically adapt uh, what we did so far until now is adapting the uh, predictors. So estimating the coefficients for the predictors, uh, maintaining stable the response variable. So this is uh, what is uh, the unidirectional uh, type of model. Now with this uh, uh, vector autoregression, so this VAR, what we are going to look at is a type of uh, relationship which is bidirectional. And uh, in the chapter, they mentioned this um, uh, example, which makes uh, really clear what we are talking about. Uh, and uh, this example is when, uh, for example, the government get into um, setting up um, uh, procedures uh, that, for example, for dealing with uh, the level of, of consumption, as well as uh, uh, the, the level of income. So let's imagine that we are uh, uh, we would like to uh, predict the level of consumption uh, or the level of income. Basically, both, both of them uh, are changing, okay? 
So we are going to have uh, uh, endogenous variables. And this means that our response variable is composed of more than one uh, level. Okay, we have more levels. We, uh, and, and they uh, basically assess uh, each level based on uh, uh, different input by the predictor. Let, let, let's um, uh, go into an example. So an example is, uh, for example, uh, something that happened in Australia during the global financial crisis in 2008 and between 2008 and 2009, when the government issued uh, a stimulus package or more than one, so stimulus packages that include, uh, included cash payments. Okay, so that, that those cash payments went to increasing the income. Okay, so boosting up the income, and as a consequence, uh, the um, in, uh, increase in income is related with uh, increasing consumption. So uh, this is basically uh, was under Christmas time, uh, and as, um, uh, as a result of this uh, uh, government um, uh, uh, stimulus, basically, retailers reported strong sales and so the economy stimulated. Um, this is uh, um, technically defined as a bidirectional relationship. So this type of model is, uh, is going to investigate this type of relationship, which is bidirectional, okay? So this VAR models are generalizations of the univariate autoregression model for forecasting, a vector of time series. In this case, we have endogenous variables. So our response variable is composed of levels, different levels. And for example, if we stop on the first one, just to give you an, an aspect of what's happening in, on, on this matrix, because this is a matrix. If we just take the first element, this element in itself is composed by other um, uh, observations. And um, all the observations go back in time of one, um, of one period, okay. Uh, we it it is basically a um, uh, light introduction to neural networks, okay. So a, a model inside a model. So um, this type of forecast for this VAR models are generated recursively. So in fact, what is challenging on this type of models are dealing with high levels of uh, predictors as well as uh, high levels of lag. So in this case, we have th these two um, parameters, K, which is the number of variables that we deal with, and the lag, which is P. So to do, a, a, uh, so the, the, the challenge here, the difficulty is dealing with this high level of coefficients that we would like to estimate, okay? So we, we deal with K plus P times K power two number of coefficients. So the highest uh, is the uh, K, so the number of variables, the highest is, is the um, number of coefficients. 
So, and in this type of models, it was to mention that we are look at uh, when we evaluate the result of the model, we, we look at the BIC matrix more than the AIC. Okay, there is um, a bit of theory to go back uh, and have a look at to, to fully understand why this is happening. Okay, so let, let's go into a case study. So we, we use this um, US change uh, data set. Let's jump into R. Right. So so we have this um, US change data set, okay? And um, this data set is Uh, okay, let's load the libraries, FTP3. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Um, so this is uh, basically the, the data set. So we have seen it a um, uh, few times now. And so it is a, a time series within quarter period, and then we have consumption and income. Okay, so we apply this type of model, and they basically name it AICC and BIC because uh, they are basically focused on this type of uh, metric. Okay, these are adjustments of the R sum of uh, the R, the residual sum of squares. Okay, and if on the introduction of statistical learning, you find a very nice uh, specification of, of the, the, those two. Okay, so we use this function bar, V A R which is the uh, from table and it's, it's used to estimate a DAR model, which searches through the vector of lag order to find the best model, which has the lowest AIC or the lowest BIC. So this is, uh, and it's basically uh, as always the same thing. Ordinary linear um, sum of square, but uh, basically um, it's set to find the lowest value for these two metrics. Okay, and so here there's a, a little bit more specification specification of what's happening. Uh, it's basically always used like that. So you need to be specify var and var. Okay. Um, so this in the table tools, it's uh, basically um, uh, helps you to identify the variables. Okay, so like some variables as in some other function. So the the the, the syntax to use this model is VAR, then you specify which variables are you going to use, consumption and income, and then uh, the default is the AICC, while the uh, if you would like to specify other type of metrics, you use this IC option, okay, which is not uh, mentioned, I didn't mention it uh, specifically. Um, uh, okay, the information criterion, okay, option. 
Okay, so but basically this is quite fast, so we can uh, uh, run and have a look at it. Uh, okay, so basically we can see that these are the two type of models. Uh, this is the value, uh, the lowest AI uh, CC, and this is the, the lowest uh, BIC. Okay, basically, it's in selection mode. And so, now if we, um, okay. We can see from the, the, the first visualization, and we know that uh, the consumption, uh, while the income is basically included within the, dot, the, the, the limits, consumption uh, is uh, the variable that uh, might contain some uh, seasonality, okay? Uh, especially that um, while the income is more stable along the time. Uh, and so let's, let's select this uh, AICC, uh, and this is because there is a, a reason, let's go back uh, here. Uh, so basically, uh, we can see that both the consumption and the income have um, some um, uh, um, particular. Uh, so we basically, in this case, we forecasted and then filtered for um, time to be greater, so a quarter. Uh, uh, over 2010, okay? So we have this uh, starting from 2012, quarter one. Um, I, I think it, uh, um, let's, let's go back and have a look at this, uh, this thing, because we haven't seen it. So basically we have these quarters, okay? But um, if we, Basically, filter the quarter to be greater than My dog. Okay, so now I like I like to have a look at this uh, filter year quarter. Uh, if I don't specify year, and this, this was that. Okay. Year 2010. Okay, and then we basically count the quarter. Okay, 
So we have 2011, 2012, 2013, so to 2019. And we can see here. that basically what is um, is happening, uh, that, that we can see uh, some, some increase uh, both in uh, consumption and income. So no increase, but they have the same, uh, more or less the same uh, prediction. Okay, so they, they are uh, basically influencing each other. Uh, this uh, this is it from this uh, first uh, part, okay? So we can um, uh, even have a look at the um, chapter in itself. Uh, and they basically, based on, uh, on um, their conclusion, basically, on this... Um, The conclusion is um, that in this case, in this particular case, the uh, AICC uh, uh, release better um, results than the DIC. Okay, so the residuals have uh, so okay. This, this is from uh, the, the, the previous plot, okay? But um, they mentioned that basically uh, one of the two, uh, what is it? So basically one, uh, so we did two models, okay? Uh, and, um, uh, one they they call it VAR five, while the other one is VAR one. Okay, so uh, uh, this VAR five is selected using AICC as default. No, okay, and as I said, while the other one is BAC, and uh, the BAC always selects a model that has a few parameters. Uh, than the AICC model, as it imposes a strong penalty for the number of parameters. And this is basically the difference uh, between th this, these two. These are uh, the criteria for selecting uh, parameters based uh, on an adjustment of the residual sum of square. Um, in fact, um, the, the residuals from the, the VAR1 model uh, result with a significant autocorrelation for the consumption, while the other one, so the AICC, has uh, effectively captured all the information of the data. Okay, so it's a bit controversial, basically, because they said uh, this of model uh, mostly uh, use or prefer the BIC matrix, okay, for selecting. But then on this case, uh, particular case, the, um, the one that goes by default using the AICC is the one that capture all the information in the data. Okay, so there's something to um, think about, about, about this. But if we just um, uh, want to have a look at this, uh, the function that we use, we use the model and then the VAR and then we need to specify the value to, uh, within this model. Okay, let, let's go. Uh, and now I will look at what's happening. Uh, oops, I need to uh, go on this other page. Uh, 
Um, the, uh, this is now the case of uh, neural networks. We have, uh, in some sense, introduced uh, neural networks because neural network it's basically a multi-layer model. Okay. Uh, on this chapter, what we do is basically just looking at the um, one-layer uh, type of model. Okay, just with the one layer. Uh, and um, uh, so the, the so-called feed forward net type of feed forward network. Uh, what's happened within the neural network is that this is our input layer. Okay, so this is what we feed, uh, what we feed our model. Then what's happened is that something is chosen by random and produces a new value. This value is then um, uh, um, put, uh, uh, use it as a hidden layer and pass through uh, an activation function that produces the output. So the output of the node in one layer are the input to the next layer. Okay, so uh, we do the input. It produces a result. Uh, so we have an estimation. This estimation is then used within another function that within one, one layer, then it produces an output. If we have more layers, then that output goes within another layer, and then another layer, and then finally the output. What, what's happened here, the, uh, we have this type of model. So we have uh, our coefficients, and then we have this, uh, these are our predictors, which are now weighted. So they, we use the, some weights, uh, we, uh, mm, they are in themselves uh, uh, coefficients to be estimated. So we estimate coefficient twice, basically. Okay. And to estimate this coefficient, we use an, an activation function, which is this one here. Well, this is one type of, of the function that we can, this is one type of the function that can be used. Okay. So the weight starts with an assignment, assigned random value. And then they are updated using the observed data. So with the, this package, we use this function, which is neural network autoregressive with the usual two parameters, P for the lags and K for the number of, uh, in this case, nodes in the hidden layers. And uh, the, the basic type of this, uh, so we K uh, equals zero. This type of model, this type of neural network is equivalent to an ARIMA P zero zero. While if we have more layers, basically this M identify on which layer we are. Okay, so we have a, a series of, of this model. Uh, and this will be equivalent to the ARIMA uh, P00. So, the default value set for K, which are the nodes uh, in the hidden layer, will be P times capital P plus one divided by two. Okay, all, all of this, I don't know if I um, made a confusion or if I said it um, a bit, um, it's pretty, really fascinating uh, argument, this uh, neural network. Because um, you basically have some observations, and then um, 
in case of a time series, these observations are uh, divided uh, within a certain length of time. So we also consider time within the neural network. And this is uh, slightly different from other type of uh, uh, data that usually, uh, so that, uh, you, that are used with neural networks, so such as text data. For example, okay. So you, if you have a, if you make a neural network with text data, what do you do? You have a vocabulary, no? Okay. So you put this, uh, uh, this vocabulary uh, in as an input, and uh, that would be your starting point. Then you have a function which is can be like a context of these words that works out the words that you input to release the probability that that would be um, the, the most probable, prob the, the, uh, uh, suitable uh, word for that content, context. Um, and then if you have more layer, um, this will go onto another uh, level to finally release uh, the most probable out next word to the one that you input. But when we are talking about time series, we also have time to deal with. Okay, so anytime you, we consider, we, we break down our input variables as we have more models, going back in of time of one period. Okay, so let, let's see a practical example. This is nice. So we have the sunspots. Uh, so let's go and jump into R. Uh, we have the sunspot, uh, and this is basically uh, made, uh, so we have an index and the value. So the in, this goes back in time. This is the value of the number of spots spotted on the sun at particular year in time. Okay, we, there is a, um nice um the index is basically the time okay so start in uh, the 1700 and end to the 1988 uh, so a certain number of years and then we want to predict the next 30 years. And this is quite complicated. Okay, it takes a, a long time. In fact, um, if uh, we can use this uh, 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 neural network uh, autoregressive model, uh, we should uh, use this uh, transformation of data with the square root of the values. And this run fast. Okay, if you run it, it runs fast. We can even have a look at the residuals. So it's all um, quite understandable. But then if you eat the forecast, even if you eat for one period, it takes a long time to forecast. Because this is, uh, the, the forecast is, a, is a already embedded in this type of models. Okay, so you are at, at the end, release an output. Uh, and so the best suggestion here, uh, this is uh, basically the model, okay? It's a function of our, pre of our uh, response variable, which is always the same thing, uh, basically. But we have, uh, within this, this uh, function, we have another function, okay? So the best suggestion here is to use a bootstrap application. 
uh, and so what bootstrap does is to basically simulate possible outcomes based on provide data okay so here uh, what what it does is a simulation of nine possible future sample paths uh, and so time is set to nine for 30 years ahead h equals to 30 and so we do bootstrapping here with uh, this function generate so we generate uh nine possible sample paths ahead of 30 periods in this case years ahead of 30 years and so then we auto plot the simulation uh, and we see that th this is basically a bootstrapping simulation of what basically based on this data uh we can even uh, like transpose this simulation back and so that would be like simulation of of what already happened but we push it forward and that is suitable as a prediction if i if i go back to uh the book Uh, you can see the book, right? Can you see the book? Yeah. Um, this is uh, the, the yes. result. Of, yeah. This is the result of the simulation, the one that I didn't run because, you know, with a, uh, this neural network and then the forecast H equals to 30, it takes too, too long time okay, to, to run. But this is basically the simulation and this is the bootstrapping i didn't put them uh, side by side but as you can see it catches the um um the the, the intervals uh yeah um sorry i have a comment here yeah okay if you see that plot uh on the sunspots okay the the one uh -huh, the one upstairs yes what you can see is that uh this has irregular seasonality in other words uh there is no uh there is no uh uniform uh seasonality in fact there there is no seasonality here okay what we talk is about cycles because they are more uh than the, than the than the than the than the you know the period the period uh that we're studying because we're studying years right so sometimes you get a period a high period between nine to 14 years and then a lower period between nine and 14 years so what happens is that the neural network is uh trying to catch all these irregularities and then you know, use it, uh, you know, for the forecast. If you do this with ARIMA, for example, the ARIMA, because the seasonality has to be uniform, ARIMA is going to give you a uniform, a pattern. And no. that's not the pattern that it replicates the actual data. The actual data doesn't have a regular seasonality here. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's why I pick for the exercise on the neural network. I pick the links, the links data set, which is the trappings, the links trappings in Canada from, you know, uh, certain periods. And what happens is that that links trappings also doesn't have a uniform seasonality. In other words, it's more like a cycle uh, situation. Mm -hmm. And if you apply ARIMA or any, any model that assumes that seasonality is uniform, you're not going to have good, good forecast. Okay, so you have to use other methods. And one of the methods that the author is uh, proposing is this one, the an, an inner network, to tackle that uh, irregularity between those patterns. 
Okay, which the neural network can catch. Yeah. And so, um, okay. And so, um, what is it? Uh, and, and this is uh, basically. Uh, What um, there is um, also so it, because now we are going to have a look at the bootstrapping and begging. It says that by default the errors uh, are drawn from a normal distribution, and so the bootstrap argument allows the error to be bootstrapped. So randomly, randomly drawn from the historical errors. Okay, so this means that also um, the use of the bootstrapping um, is. Uh, um, in some senses, um, reasonable. Okay, so you okay. In some, in some, in some senses, mm, reasonable uh, and um, works well with a uh, with the errors. Okay, so let's have a look at the what's happened with the with the bootstrapping. And what's happened is um, what is this bootstrapping at the end? So we have two uh, specifications, bootstrapping and begging. It's a basically a transformation of the time series. Okay, so the series is when we bootstrapping, decompose it into trend, seasonal, and reminded. So first thing, we use the uh, decomposition STL, and then the reminder is bootstrapped to obtain a shuffle version of our data, uh, of the SIP. Okay, so this is basically what happened uh, and here we use uh, uh, the quarterly cement production uh, in australia that we have already seen quite a few times uh, and we check that the decomposition has adequately captured the trend and seasonality and that there is no obvious remaining signal in the reminder series so uh, we see that our we set this to be uh, greater than 1988. So uh, we look at this uh, level of cement production in Australia uh, from 1988. And first thing that we do, we use the model STL. Uh, have a look at the components and the auto plot. And so we see that we have uh, uh, here, this is the original trend. We have the trend, the season year, and the reminder. Do you have any comments? Because we already comment this, uh, this data set a bit. Uh, what's happened here is then we use uh, the bootstrapping techniques with the generate function. And this time we do on uh, setting uh, the new data, okay, on our data, 10 times. So we basically uh, create 10 paths. And, and we set uh, this bootstrap block size equal to eight. 
שעתיים, אפשר ללכת אוקיי, so we will use a block size array to cover two years of data. So auto plot, auto layer, uh, as, uh, as, before. as you can see, we now didn't forecast. Okay, we just bootstrap it. So we simulate our data. If we, uh, instead of uh, doing this, uh, we did it as we did it before here. So going ahead of some period, this, uh, yeah, instead of having this uh, on top of our series, we, we could have a sort of prediction of uh, based on what happened before, constructed on a simulation of our database, which is not bad. I don't uh, think, uh, okay, I like it basically. Um, this one is. Uh, well, I, just, I just have one comment. Um, yeah. Going back to the sunspots, yeah. uh, one of the one of the uh, approaches that you could do when you bootstrap your forecast is that you could extract from those, you know, uh, lower and, and upper limits, mm -hmm. you could extract the confidence in the interval, mm -hmm. okay? Instead of just putting 80 and 95, mm -hmm. you could extract the confidence interval from the bootstrap uh, simulations, okay? And that will give you a better measure of confidence in your forecast. Yeah. All right. You can, can calculate the uh, yeah. expected value. Yeah. If, 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 you, if you see the raw data, if you see the, 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 the raw data from those simulations, you will see that there's a lower and there's a, a, there's a maximum, right? Mm -hmm. You know, a, a lower limit, a maximum limit. That's going to be the bootstrap uh, confidence interval. Okay, instead of arbitrarily saying that uh, 80 or 95, yeah. all right? So depending on the data, you are going to extract a better measure of confidence, confidence using the actual data that you have. Instead of arbitrarily, you know, putting a mean and then putting a distribution, Yeah. okay? And that's one of the things that the bootstraps, you know, gives you. It gives you a confidence interval that is a better measure from the actual data that you are that you are uh, uh, working on. Mm -hmm. Okay, and as you can see on the soft spots, the confidence interval, you know, just by looking at it, the confidence interval probably is a little bit, you know, uh, tighter, tighter than the ones that we have uh, as a, uh, you know, assuming that there's a normal distribution and we get 80 or 95% depending on the standard deviations. Mm -hmm. uh, here, you get a little bit tighter, uh, uh, you know, confidence interval based on the actual data on those bootstrap uh, simulations. Mm -hmm. The same thing happens with the with the cement uh, data set. In the cement data set also you can have, if you do the forecast, of course, you can have also a measure, a confidence interval based on those uh, bootstrap uh, uh, samples. Okay, so. That, that's one of the uh, that, that's one of the uh, mechanisms that you can use for uh, trying to see how robust is your is your forecast. But remember, forecast from the actual data, not the future data. <laughs> okay, because you eventually have to compare with the future data. You are making those bootstrap from the actual data, from the one that you, that you know, not from the not, not from the future data. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Then uh, finally, the the last uh, bit of the chapter is about bootstrap aggregating. Uh, this basically is what you are mentioning, right? So basically, to improve the forecast accuracy, um, 
we can take the forecast of each of the additional time series and then calculate the average uh, resulting forecast. Uh, and so this is basically now. Right, my, my, my mention was more on the confidence intervals. Okay, uh -huh. we're using the same forecast, you know, from the model. We're, we're, not, we're, we're not changing the forecast, but we're using the bootstrap of the, of the simulations to get a better measure of confidence. Here, what they're using is to get an average of those bootstraps, get yeah. an average, and then that will be your forecast. Okay, it's slightly, slightly different mm -hmm. uh, interpretation there or, or, or use of those, uh, of those bootstraps. Okay, it depends on how you, know, how you see it. Because if you are confident that your forecast is accurate, then probably you don't need this. But if you have a wider range of, 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 of you know, a divergence on your forecast, depending on simulations, then probably you will need to get you know, some, some measure of average to try to stay more or less in the middle path, okay? Yeah. Here we see this thing, basically, um, to uh, so basically, we see how to improve the forecast accuracy, uh, uh, leveraging up the number of paths to, for example, 100, uh, and then using the ETS model, uh, and then forecast to help pay it ahead. Yeah, you, you see the difference here? You're applying the model to the simulation. Mm -hmm. in, the, in the Sunspots uh, example, you were already getting the model and you were applying the bootstraps you know, to those forecasts, okay? You know, to those forecasts from the actual data. Yeah. So here, what you're doing is applying the model, the, the forecasting model to the simulation. To mm -hmm. each of those, you know, simulated uh, time series, okay, uh, uh, so, so, uh, to, totally different mechanisms here. Yeah, and so we can see that now we have uh, uh, under simulation of the forecast, forecast simulation, uh, and then uh, we average this uh, under forecast by summarizing and calculate, uh, calculating the mean. Uh, and so bagging this better forecast than just applying ETS directly. Uh, and in fact, here is a uh, basically, if we use the uh, ETS and then forecast, this will be the Maybe we should have a look here. Uh, also, for example, for forecasts that have a kind of irregular, you know, uh, pattern, uh, mm -hmm. this method also kind of smooths smooth it the, the forecast because what you're doing is on the when, when it diverges between different values, you're getting the mean, okay? So that mean is going to be smoothing that forecast, which kind of stabilizes uh, the forecast, okay? Instead of having this, you know, high, high and lows. Yeah. This is, um, oh, okay, this is quite fast. Okay, so we can... Uh... Have a look at this, uh, the bootstrap as well. Uh, um, quite fast. So basically, we generate this uh, and then we simulate. So, so now this is uh, the result of the simulation. And we apply the model. Uh, 
and this apparently takes a bit. And so, yes, this is a quite interesting chapter. That was, um, this is it, uh, all, uh, all, all I've got, all is in, in, the, in the chapter. It's a quite interesting chapter. Uh, it's worth to um, uh, even go back uh, and have a look at this. Um, uh, so when you got your data and have a look at the, uh, if you have uh, in the case of complex seasonalities. And so you can think about uh, uh, advanced type of models to apply to your data.